the question is a patient complains of pain in the tooth on taking hot food the pain subsides on taking cold what is the diagnosis so uh, these hot and cold tests are basically thermal tests they are a way of assessing the vitality of the pulp however they are not truly measuring the vitality of the pulp because a pulpal vitality or vitality of any organ is dictated by its blood supply okay so these tests measure the nerve supply or the nerve conducting potential of the pulpal tissue and that is the reason why they are also known as sensitivity tests and they help to ensure that the nerve supply which is there in the pulp at that point in time is intact and is able to carry the sensation so this is one way of measuring pulpal vitality the other way of measuring pulpal vitality is ept that is electronic pulp test so what you do when you are using these tests is basically you need to have control teeth if my tooth in question is going to be the maxillary right central incisor that is 11 i need to ensure that the response that 11 gives is somewhat similar to what the other teeth are that is how i can distinguish whether the tooth is vital or non vital so in order to ensure that i take three other teeth into consideration the adjacent teeth the opposing teeth and the contralateral teeth so what does that mean if my control if my tooth in question or the tooth that is required the in which the pulpal test is necessary is 11 the adjacent teeth which i would be taking into consideration for the examination is going to be 21 and 12 the opposing tooth is going to be 41 and the contralateral tooth is going to be 31 so if i am taking the left maxillary first molar as the tooth which needs the pulpal vitality to be assessed my control teeth are going to be 27 25 36 16 16 and 46 so these are the teeth that need to be taken into consideration while performing a pulpal vitality test adjacent contralateral opposing okay now each tooth shows a particular response or rather the vitality response of a particular tooth is dictated by what is the status of the pulp for example if my pulp is in state of reversible pulpitis that means pulpitis means there is inflammation in the pulp so when i am going to apply a stimulus the response is going to be early so if i am going to be if the patient is having if i apply cold on my 21 and 11 and 11 shows an earlier response than 21 that means it is in a state of inflammation so the inflammation can either be reversible or irreversible pulpitis okay more often than not the status if the pulpal tissue the response is early and since it is in a state of pulpitis you will then go for the subjective symptoms that the patient is giving if the patient says that there is food lodgment and after removal of the food or after removal of the particle the pain subsides then it is in a state of reversible pulpitis however if the patient says that he is consuming food and despite the removal of the food particle that gets stuck in the cavity the patient is still complaining of pain that means he is in a state of irreversible pulpitis so in such a situation you will have to perform a root canal treatment so that is the reason why you always have to correlate whatever tests you perform with the symptoms and the signs that the patient provides you with so that you can come to a diagnosis and then devise your treatment plan however in certain situations there are patients who respond to hot test as well as cold test differently in some patients you might have a particular cold test which will be there and then after giving a hot test there may be a different response that the patient or the tooth may elicit however it is not always true more often than not when a tooth has pulpal so i have spoken to you about reversible and irreversible pulpitis however if a patient does not give any response that means the pulp pulpal tissue is completely dead if it is dead what does that mean that the pulpal tissue has undergone complete necrosis however in a multi rooted tooth 
it is not necessary that all the three canals have to be having necrosed pulp. One canal or two canals may have pulpal tissue which may be in a state of irreversible or reversible pulpitis. So what you would do is you would perform a cold test and in such a situation the patient will elicit a pain. Okay. And on applying a hot test rather where you will take rather hot water or you will take a warm GP, the patient's pain may subside. Vice versa, what can happen is if the patient's tooth is completely necrosed, again this was what I spoke about when two canals are probably in a state of inflammation and one canal is necrosed. What if all the three canals are necrosed? There have been instances when there is partial necrosis that occurs of the entire of the pulp in all the three canals. In such a situation what will happen is, what you would do, you give the patient warm or you use a hot test by using heated GP, gutta percha. After that when you apply a cold stick, the cold com completely subsides, sorry the pain completely subsides. This is very typical of pulpal necrosis or partial pulpal necrosis as they call it. That is because the nerves which are there, they get irritated by the heat. And once they are irritated by the heat, when you apply the cold, the irritation subsides. The nerves are not or in a state of relaxation. And that is the reason why in partial pulpal necrosis, you may have uh, pain that may be aggravated by heat and that is relieved by cold. However, it is like I told you, not always necessary. Now, a very important thing since most of you even apply for AIMS exams, if you have say a tooth where two canals are in a state of reversible or irreversible pulpitis and one canal is in a state of necrosis, their recent data suggests that you can do a partial pulpectomy. What does that mean? Wherever the canal is necrosed, you can remove the pulpal, can pulpal tissue from that canal and you can leave the pulpal tissue in the other two canals as it is. For this to happen, you have to have absolute isolation. The entire procedure has to be under, undertaken under a microscope. And lastly, you use MTA at the canal orifices in order to maintain the vitality of the pulp. Third thing, this entire procedure that I spoke to you about, the, di the most important clinical factor which determines whether you do a partial pulpectomy or not is going to depend upon whether you are able to achieve hemostasis that is stop control of bleeding from the pulpal tissue. So if you are able to achieve bleeding for 10 minutes within 10 minutes that means the entire pulpal canal is not completely necrosed and all the three canals other is not completely necrosed and you can probably just do a partial pulpectomy or a pulpotomy and leave it as it is.